Hey guys, welcome to uh, Free Salon Education Partner Membership Class. This is our second class uh, for cutting, and I'm excited today to bring you guys a totally new cut. Now, if you are live with us on Facebook, you're good to go. You can chat and everything. If you're on the website, that's totally great as well. You just can't use the chat function uh, for some reason. So we'll, uh, I, I'm not sure why the website does that, but on the Facebook page, if you don't have access to that, you should, but definitely send us an email if you can't get access to that at matt at freesaloneducation.com, and I'll make sure that I can get you in there. But if you're on Facebook, there we go. And if you're on the website, you can watch, play along, and, and uh, there we go. So this is the uh, second class for cutting. Today, what we're going to focus on is a graduation with layers. The thing I want to do in this class is really uh, do a lot of dry cutting. So this is actually, this mannequin has half the cut done already. And what we're going to do is cut the wet portion of it, which is our precision portion. Then we're going to go in and I already blew it dry, already smoothed it out for you guys so that we don't have to watch all of that. Uh, we did a lot of smoothing in the last video. So if you want to look back on that, this is, that's the exact same technique I did on this mannequin right here. So underneath you can see, let me show you here. You can see the graduation through there. No, no uh, precision lines happening really around the hairline. We're going to do all of that in the dry cut as well. But you can see that uh, nice finish to it. You can see that uh, graduation underneath. And then this long hair is all of our disconnection that we're going to be cutting in the dry cut. So I'm going to set this aside for now. We're going to move into our wet mannequin here. We're going to do a Q&A at the end of the class just so that uh, those of you guys that are watching and you're asking the questions, I can, I'll can probably I'll try to answer everything uh, before you even ask it. That's the goal of the class. But if I don't and I miss something, I'll go over it at the very end of the class as well. So we're going to start off. I got my clips. You only need a couple clips because the sectioning is not super complicated with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the parietal ridge and anytime I'm sectioning a haircut this one she could wear either way but my big focus is the different corners of the head so I'm going to work along the parietal ridge all the way back to the mid crown area what I'm going to be creating is a nice rectangle the thing I like to do to get a nice clean parting is to comb the hair in the direction I want the section to be or the, the direction I'm going to make my parting so once I get the hair flowing in that direction, it makes it a lot easier to get a nice, clean parting. Now I'm going to go across mid-crown. I'll twist it so you guys can see. Cross mid-crown and then straight back to me to create that rectangle on the top. Now what I'll do is I'll look in the front to make sure I have that balance. We want this to be symmetrical. Very rare that I get this on the very first try here. So I'm just going to take a little bit extra from the opposite side. And I want it right about the edge of the eyebrow right there on both sides. I can also take a look if I step back, turn this a little bit. If I step back, I can take a look from the back and then I can look from the front and make sure, check in the mirror to see if you see that balance in the section. Then what I'm going to do is twist it up nice and tight, get this hair out of the way. We're not going to be cutting any of this wet. That's why I have extras. All right, the next section is the next and the last. So we're going to create a triangle in the back of the head. So what I'm going to do is draw my first diagonal back line down to the occipital bone. Do 
you can see that diagonal back from that rectangle let me do the same thing on the opposite side diagonal back down to the occipital bone and what this section creates spin it so you can see And if you guys are watching on the website, you can see the head sheet underneath the video. What that creates is this, let's see if we can show you this, Dad, over here. There we go. That creates this blanket of long hair coming over top. Now, a lot of people, if they cut this entire thing wet, what they're going to see is a nice heavy shelf uh, throughout this portion where the graduation starts. And my feeling on this is if we cut this all dry, we can soften it and really create whatever effect we're, we're looking for in the back. So if we want more of a layered effect, which is what we're going to go for today, I can layer it more. If we want more of a graduation effect, I can still keep it nice and soft and graduated in the back. All right, so there is our sections. Turn it. So where we're going to start is right here in the back. We're going to take diagonal forward sections or partings throughout the head shape. Lower that a little bit. There we go. So what I'm going to do is comb everything. You can see how far I tilt the head forward. The reason I do that is because that makes it more comfortable for me holding the hair out here. If she had her head up like this, then it would right away tuck my body and then I would have a, a struggle keeping consistency. So, like I always say, consistency makes your haircuts better. So, the more consistent you are, the more consistent your haircut will be. So, I'm just going to comb the hair down, keep everything flowing in the direction I want, take a straight down center back parting, clip away one side. I'll twist and show you that. So we've clipped away the right side. We're just going to work on the left first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these diagonal sec or partings throughout the head shape, over directing everything back. Now, we do have the overhead view, so you will be able to see once I start bringing these sections out, I move as a traveling guide all the way across the head shape until I get to behind the ear. Then when I'm behind the ear, I'm going to over direct everything back. The other thing that you're going to notice when I do this is that it's going to create that little hole in the haircut. The reason it's going to create the hole is because I'm going to create layers throughout. If I exaggerated everything a little bit and overdirected it a little bit more, I wouldn't have that hole. But I want the hole for now because I know what the end result is going to be. I'm going to cut all of that hair off and continue that line dry. So I'm not worried about it, but I want to tell you guys ahead of time so that when you see the hole happening, you don't... Uh, start to freak out about it because a lot of people get upset when they see that hole and it really there's no reason to because we're going to fix it uh, not fix it but we're going to create our line dry so turn just a little bit see if you can get good angle on that actually Is that bad? Good. All right. Diagonal forward parting. Slight diagonal forward, not too too much of an angle. Twist this back so you can see the angle. So I'm going to bring everything towards me. Overdirected to the previous. Bringing it back. And I'm going to start my cut. Now you can see, this is the big thing I want you guys to focus on. This piece of hair right here, at 90 degrees, it's right here. This is where it has no layers. This is where it starts to build up graduation. So there's a fine line between are we layering or are we graduating. So if you look at all of this stuff in my hand right here, my entire finger is not following the head shape. So this portion of the cut is going to have uh, layers. This portion of the cut is going to be graduated a little bit, and this portion of the cut is going to be removing extra weight, almost cutting like a concave feel to it, and that's why when you let this section go, it kicks out the bottom, and you end up with almost that little tail feel to it, 
But that's what we're going to cut off in the dry portion of the cut. So you don't have to worry about it. But I want you to understand that the whole time I'm holding this, it's all doing different stuff. So you can't, uh, you can't assume that you're going to have the same result throughout this entire section I'm holding. The other thing you can see, I, s I shift my scissor and I put my thumb in the other direction. I could try to cut like this, but it twi twists my body. Chris, do you want to go to the full camera real quick? So um, if I go to take a section and I cut like this, then my body stays like this. If I hold this section and I want to cut palm to palm, then I have to twist my body and my head, which instantly makes me uncomfortable. Um, makes me tired. So it's not, that's not a comfortable body position for me. So I want to make sure that when I'm holding every section, I may cut like this with my thumb uh, in the other direction. Could cut like this. Don't want to cut like this because you can see my elbow comes up. So this drops me into a comfortable position. My arm is uh, straight out instead of being like this or like this. So that's just the difference. And the way that you're going to do this, we might as well Go over it. That's the beauty of having these longer videos. So you can see, here's my scissor. What I do is I hold it in my hand like this. So to cut the other direction, I just take, here, turn like this. I take my thumb out like that, and I put it through the other direction. And I just use the tip of my finger and cut. So that's all it is. So instead of cutting like this, you're just flipping the scissor. I wrap my fingers around this portion of the scissor to keep it nice and tight. And then I can work and cut like that. So there's a lot of different ways to cut with your scissor. The thing I love about the DB20 and why it's one of my favorites is you can see this little... I can, now I'm really throwing you off that. There you go. You're good. So you can see this bevel right here. This bevel is not in a lot of scissors. A lot of scissors aren't handmade in that way. Um, so all this little detail. So if I want to just put my scissor, my thumb in halfway into the scissor, I can actually use it to cut like that. Or I can turn it and cut like this. So there's so many different ways to hold a scissor to keep yourself comfortable and consistent throughout it. I'll miss this back down. I'm going to cut a couple more uh, sections or partings in here, and then I'll show you guys what the result is that's happening. I'm going to focus that in that a little bit. So still working diagonal forward, back to the previous section. Working my way out. Sweet. So we're bringing this back. Now, here's the other thing that's happening throughout the, the head shape. So as I start working around the head, the head starts to move away from me. So that little bit of hair that I was holding out here, whether it was layering or graduation, now is moving across the head shape. So now the head shape is actually flat out here. So if I move to this piece of hair, this is now 90 degrees out this way instead of straight back like this piece, right? So now I'm working at 90 degrees here and dropping it all the way down here and over directing it back. So this piece, this section, this parting is not going to react the same as this section if I over direct it back. That's why you start to see that buildup of weight. It gets heavier, it gets longer because everything is peeling away and coming further back, creating that extra length. So to me, this is really important to not only focus on how far we're over-directing the hair back, but at what angle we're over-directing it back to. I want to keep that height in the parting, in the section. So nice and high, coming out. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's 
Yes, I would tell. So the question was, would I tell my client to move to put their head that far forward? Yes. Um, the client is there, and I think Brian even talked about this in his class. The the client is there only for 45 minutes to an hour. So for them to tilt their head back and for you to be comfortable makes more sense than worrying about whether they want to put their head down or not or what they're doing on their phone or what magazine they're looking at. It's more important to go through it and make sure that you have nice consistency. So I would tilt their head forward and make sure I keep it still as I'm working through the haircut because the end result will be way more consistent than if I just let them do what they want. So now we've gotten to behind the ear. So if you click on the overhead real quick. So everything came to here. Then I moved to the next one. Then I moved to the next one. And now I'm at this point where everything is straight back to this point. So it was here, 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 here. We want to keep it in a nice box, overdirecting everything back. So now. Just taking a little bit of the old hair, using that as my guide, keeping a nice high elevation so that I keep my layering going. Now I'm more comfortable cutting with my scissor in this position so I can make that shift. And as I let it go, now what you're going to see is that hair is starting to build up. So that's where that hole is that people would start to kind of freak out about. Oh, look at that little guy. Don't tell anyone. Now... Over direct, diagonal forward, bringing everything back. Yeah, you're fine. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, you're fine. So keeping that layering. If I go too far down like this, now I'm building up so much weight in the front. I want to keep it nice and light. Now, this is for a layered Bob. So if you guys don't want so many layers, then you would definitely keep the graduation low. So you can see, got a little kick here, then it goes up. We're going to cut all of that off dry. So all of this stuff is coming straight back. Not all the way back to the center, just straight back off of the ear and off of the head shape. So that starts our angle forward. There's that little groove that we talked about. We're going to cut into all of that dry, and it's going to tie it all together. Now I'm going to twist to the other side. There we go. Yeah, do you want to move it? Yeah, just move the camera a little bit. There you go. Okay, so we're going to work the same way. Now, the difference in this part is that I'm going to be working with my fingers down because we talk about consistency uh, a lot already. This is going to keep us consistent throughout the right-hand side. Now, as I was going through the left-hand side, I was combing everything towards the center. So every section, every parting I took, I brought it towards the next, uh, the previous section. So I want to do the same thing on the opposite side. If I were to start trying to wrap this part in like that and pushing all of the the new, all of this hair started pushing it away from my guide, then one side's gonna end up a lot longer than the other. So those of you that have troubles with one side being longer than the other one, we all have that problem, but this is gonna keep it a lot more consistent and, and definitely give you a better result at the end. So what I'm gonna do is not tilt the head as far this time because now I'm working like this. Uh, so to stay consistent, the hardest part about working on the right-hand side is I will have my elbow in the air. 
which is going to want me, I'm going to want to drop that uh, when I get halfway through this. So I just got to stay focused on keeping that elbow up. That's true. Let's see uh, a little bit of. I want to keep even saturation on uh, the hair at all times as well. All right. So diagonal forward. I'm working with the wide teeth of my comb. The reason I chose to do that is because I don't want a lot of tension on the hair, especially around the hairline. The more tension you have on your comb, the more tension you have on the hair, the more it's going to react and bounce back. So I like to s give myself a little bit of forgiveness throughout that section. Now I'm going to switch to cutting hair like I was with the scissor like this. Uh, the reason for that is when I go like this, I move just that one thumb blade. So if I try to do this and they have shoulders and a neck, then I am constantly hitting it and it's in the way. So I flip my scissor like this, keep my steady blade along my finger and along the shoulder, and then I just I have my motion blade on top. Just allows me to get through this first bit without being really uncomfortable and uh, hitting my guest. So continue diagonal forward. You should see your guide through there. And then be aware of your elevation. Now I'm starting to get away from that shoulder area so I can switch to cutting palm to palm. Continuing diagonal forward. Now we're getting right behind the ear. So this is where everything is coming straight back to me. And then what I like to do once I get to this point is just take a couple pieces from each side of this triangle and just make sure they're the same length. Because if they're not, then that means your elevation is not the same. And if your elevation isn't the same, this should be the same because uh, our, our sections on top are symmetrical. So there's no extra weight anywhere. So if they're not the same, you have to figure out which one is longer. Obviously, you have to go take the longer one and connect it with the shorter one. You can't do the other way around. So just make sure you have that consistency there. No sense in cutting the entire side if it's already off at that point. You'll see me lift just a slight bit because I want that to be parallel with that parting. That's how I did it on the other side. So as I bring this out, it was a little bit low. So then I do one more comb, keep it parallel throughout. Lower. It's, uh, no. 
it might just be appearing that way because of the camera angle maybe because I did have her turned a little bit more like this than the other one. That could be it. Um, if it was lower in elevation, I'd be getting extra length. Uh, right, yeah. So And last couple bits. I also had her head tilt different. I had it more forward. So that could be, yeah. Yeah, you can go back. Yeah. Because I was working on top. So I would tilt her head different. On this side, I want it to be more comfortable like this, holding it. And then on the opposite side, if, if she's tilted this far forward, then this, then my elbow has to be even more up. So if I tilt her like this, then my elbow doesn't need to be that far. up. So it's just... Again, comfort level uh, is what it's all about. And then you can see throughout, you can see that kind of nice, soft graduation. And then you can see the front here. Nice, soft feel to it. So not bad. Pretty, uh, pretty even there. So now what I did was I took down all, well, actually, I, I started, I blue dry all of this underneath. Um, I'm a big fan of blow drying what I cut, then letting everything down because you got to separate it anyways. So I blue dry this, flat wrapped it. So let me show you guys the technique I used. I used the Cloud9 blowout spray. It's just a light, uh, light hold uh, serum. It's not a spray, serum. And um, <laughs> spray. And I'll bring this blow dryer here. So what I did was I just went through and I flat wrap. Flat wrap all the way around, keeping the hair sectioned. I did a little bit of leafing in here uh, as well, but just wrapped the hair around this way. Then I went back around the other way and just continued that motion. And what that does is it uses the head shape as a big roller. So if I wrap the hair around like this, I'm using that heat, it's beveling around the head. So then once it falls forward, I get that kind of forward kick to it, wraps nice around the face. Then I can bring the rest of my uh, sections down. Just like that, it all falls over the top. And then once I have that over, then I will work my way back and forth uh, over the head shape, wrapping the top around, flat wrapping. Then I went through with our Ricardo Vibrostrate Iron here. And I'm going to make a deal right now that if you go into the FSE Partner Private Facebook group and you do this haircut, and you post it in there, I'm going to give one of these away because I have lots of them in a box to give away. So um, it would be cool to see you guys do this technique. So what I did was then took uh, small partings, about eighth of an inch wide at a time, and went through and ironed the hair. This is like, this is one of those haircuts that's, um, in my opinion, yeah, probably uh, most versatile for almost every head shape. Um, even a longer head shape, uh, I think that this works really well because you, um, exactly, yeah, you can see. So, like, if we were to cut a shorter bob, obviously that only works on so many people. But this 
will take a shorter face and elongate it. Now, if they had a shorter face, I wouldn't bring this down too far. I think that's where people, I would add in some layering, which would help tie the face shape into the haircut. So let's say that, say we can see her face, that would help. Let's say she has a, a shorter face. What I would do is bring in pieces of this haircut around the face because if there's too much separation, like if this actually came all the way down here and we had a longer haircut, it would shrink her face up. You would see that there's you know this much space between her chin, chin line and uh, her jawbone. Chin line, it's probably not a thing. Uh, her jawbone and the end of the cut. So anybody jaw? That's that's my Iowa. Um, so the end of the cut here to her face shape. That's that's really the that's what I look for when I'm trying to match a head head shape with a haircut. Yeah. Yep. Easy as that. I just want to see the. I liked uh, the last cut that we did. I saw a lot of people try it out. So it was really fun. And uh, I want to see that again. And I'll just start giving people that. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, and we'll, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick my favorite one. I'm just going to pick one that's like, you know. No, they can't all get one. I don't have that. I don't have that many. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I don't have that many. If I could do that, I would though. I have a few. I have <laughs> right. <laughs> I have a few that I can give out to you guys. So, um, whoever does it the fastest, let's do it that way. <laughs> well, how else do I do it? I didn't say they weren't loyal. Okay. Okay. I'll pick the one that looks like. <laughs> I'll I'll look I'll pick the frizziest one and then I'll pick the uh, the best haircut one. We'll see. I don't know how I'm gonna pick it, but just post them. Can't wait to see them. I'm just going through and doing a little. This is settled a bit, so a couple little finishing touches on the ironing. So you can see I'll just take slight little diagonal partings. And the reason I work diagonally is because if I worked horizontally, I would kink the hair. Um, it's just more apt to do that. And vertically is just kind of a weird uh, feeling. So, so I work slight diagonal, half-inch partings at a time through the haircut. We'll probably do a little bit more ironing at the very end, but I'm going to start cutting into this disconnection to make things easier for myself. Okay, so what we're going to work on first is this back triangle portion of the cut. I'm going to use my Blacksmith Fit Puffin. It's a dry cutting scissor. Now here's the deal. With dry cutting scissor, you can use any scissor you want to cut dry hair. This will have a little bit softer feel to it. The reason that this is a dry cutting scissor as opposed to um, you know, other scissors that you have in your kit is you can see how fat the blade is. Dry hair is hard to cut. Uh, it's hard on your scissor to cut it. That's why a lot of people don't even like using their scissors on mannequins because the hair is coarse. Think about dry hair, it dulls your blade pretty fast. Dry cutting scissor is meant to kind of glide through dry hair and it also has a thicker, fatter blade. So it has more power in the dry hair. So that way I have my precision scissor that I use on wet hair pretty much only. And then I have my dry cutting scissor that I can use on dry hair so I don't ruin my precision scissor. So that's really the big uh, difference in that. And if you guys are aware, you do get a really big discount on uh, Mizutani scissors because you're a partner. Uh, so when you're logged in on our website, you get special pricing on ev pretty much everything. So there is the puffin. So what we're going to do, take a vertical section. I'm not going to do what everyone thinks I'm going to do, which is tease cutting. We'll do that in a different video. 
But this one, I'm going to elevate the hair up, and I'm going to point cut it. And I'm going to use point cutting because I want this to have a little bit more of a precision feel to it. But also keep that shattered look. So you can see there's my graduation coming out. Let me get away from, there it is. Graduation coming up. Then I find that longest point in the graduation. That's where I start my layering. Then it comes straight up. But then look at the elevation. So at the very top crown area. This bit here, this is at 45 degree, or not even 45. This is at basically a zero degree angle. 45 would be here. So you'd still get a nice little beveled edge, but this is 90 degrees straight out. So I'm holding it here. You start to get that little bit of heaviness. I'm going to show you what that looks like. We got to iron it a little bit, but we can zoom in a little bit, Thad, maybe. There we go. Bring it into the light. There it is. So you can see that it gets a little bit heavy right in there. The reason it gets that heaviness is because of the elevation at this top part. I'm going to bring it back. So we're going to cut into that in a minute, but I want to get the structure of this cut first. So I'm bringing everything back, straight back, and cutting using my guideline from the previous. This is traveling as well. And I want this to be really shattered. We're going to use some uh, spray wax in it at the end uh, just to give it that texture. So I really want to lighten the ends and not create too much of a precision feel. Precision starts to bulk up uh, once you start working on the top of the haircut. Same thing here. Everything's going to come back, straight back. I'm going to turn this so you can see it as well. Here we go. So you can see I'm cutting into this deep point cutting in there. And then we let it go, and you can see all that texture. Can't really see it, but there we go. So you can start to see the texture, the layers coming through there. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Spin her around. Like I said, this is not precision work anymore. This is really going in and chopping up the top. I want a lot of texture in there. We already did the precision part on the bottom. Now here's the other thing that's going to happen. This is the heavy side now that we're working on. She parts on the left, moves over to the right. So whatever is the heavier side, I'm going to start to give that even more elevation in there. And you can see I'm tying it into what I just cut but there's no pr precision line in there whatsoever. Nice and choppy. So the thing I want to show you guys now, cut into this just a little bit more. Same thing here. Okay. So now as we work through the top, here's the front, here's her face. I'm going to work diagonal, uh, maybe the top angle. Here we go. Bring this forward a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to work 
So here's our, the front. You can see your nose right there. What I'm going to do is bring diagonal back all the way across and bring everything back towards me. But nice high elevation because I want it to be nice and light. There we go. So really shattering this and creating that texture. Same thing, diagonal, back, over direct everything back to me. This is where hair starts going crazy. And if I start to feel it being bulked up a little bit in my uh, inside of my finger, then I'll just recomb and come in and lighten it up even more throughout. If you guys don't currently point cut this way and you're point cutting this way, I want to show you guys the difference in that as well. So that if you want to back out just a little bit. So when I go to point cut, I just use the rule point towards uh, away from you and then back towards yourself. And then you can come in and point cut this way. If you um, are up like this and you're trying to point cut in here, there's nothing uh, comfortable about this. And you can see my wrist. But this is how a lot of people point cut. So I want to make sure if this is what you're doing, if you feel yourself doing this, then just take a second, drop that elbow, point away, point back towards yourself, and then come in with just that one blade moving and do your point cutting that way. It'll be a lot better on your wrist and your arm, shoulders. Starting to come together. We're going to comb up all this hair. Same thing, just kind of rotate it up. That will soften the heaviness that would happen if I just kept everything and cut it here in point cut. I think a lot of people just start point cutting to take out weight, but they don't realize their elevation uh, is <laughs> that their elevation is uh, working against them the whole time. No. That was my comb again. All right. Do a little bit more point cutting through the back. Get a little higher elevation in here just to soften it. Same thing here. Then what I'm going to do is a little bit of ironing because once you cut a lot of hair off, what happens is the the hair that you had ironed previously, that part is the straight part, so it starts sticking straight out. So I just want to get a little bit of a bevel, more of a natural feel to the hair. Yeah. So, okay, so here's the, the first thing is I always like to take diagonal partings. So if I were to grab all this hair here and then put my iron on it, the other thing that happens, this is really those reasons why I like teaching things because then it makes you just think about people's questions for a second. But a lot of people will grab too much hair to iron. So like let's say I take this much hair um, and I'm going to work an iron through it. As soon as I clamp down on this with this iron, it's going to pinch all this hair together and then create a crease. If you only grab a tiny bit of hair to work with, it's all pretty much on the same plane. You're not creasing it from anywhere, and then as you iron over it, it doesn't create that crease in there. So I would say that that's probably the biggest thing that happens with people is when they go to iron hair, they take too much, and then you end up with a crease. Take small sections uh, small partings throughout 
uh, when you're doing it, think of it as you're doing a haircut. Just take small sections, tight tension. More, then once you put the iron in, you won't get those uh, creases in there. And if I do take a lot of hair, like this was a little bit more hair than normal, I don't go all the way up to the scalp with it. I'll just focus, when I take bigger parting, or bigger sections, I'm just really trying to soften the ends. The base is already where it needs to be. Another little trick, I'm going to iron everything the opposite way that she's, she's going to wear it. So I'll take this side over to the opposite side. And what that's going to do is help me get the shape of the face so I get a nice soft bevel to the hair. Yeah, the sectioning is definitely important. All right. So now we're going to go through and create some of the details. So we've got our structure, we've got our texture, and now I want to go through and just soften, create some of these lines in the in the cut. I'm not going to use um, my puffin for this part because I like having a little bit uh, skinnier, pointier tip. So back to the DB20. I'm going to tilt the head forward here. It so you guys can see where we are. You can see that hole that we were taught in beauty school is the evil, the devil. What I'm going to do is cut into all of this. So I'm going to use the tip of my scissor and just start drawing my line across. You can see it starts to create a nice line. Uh, can you get just try to focus right in there? There you go. Good. <laughs> All right. Just using the tip of the scissor and drawing that line. And I'll recomb, and then I'll continue. This is something that is really important. A lot of people skip this step or don't even do this step, but you can see how it's already starting to bring it together. So it needs a little focus. Do the same thing over here. So we are basically cutting off that tail that we created earlier. And this seems a little tedious, but it, it is. And <laughs> it's, it's what separates the people that want to take the time on a haircut and have it look great, and people that just want to get them in and out. So I'm removing that. You can already see my line in there. If I curve the scissor more, I obviously take out more hair so if I want to just get the bulk out of there I'll go through quickly change the angle and then when I want it to be that nice solid line then I shift to a little bit more of a parallel feel 
with the blade. So you can start to see that angle not as yeah. Same thing on this A-line feel here. Go through. Like this haircut. So without being too strict on time, my, my haircuts are typically 45 minutes. What I do is I'll spend about 15 minutes uh, to 20 minutes, about 15 minutes on the wet cut, the precision portion. That's why I don't really feel like you have to do the entire thing f from a precision standpoint because I'm going to cut into that top anyways. Yeah, for a cut like this. So 15 minutes precision cut, probably not even quite that much. Then I'll go through and I'll spend 20 minutes blow drying. Uh, and polishing it perfect, then the last 10 minutes um, I'll use to do all this detail work. Detail work is, it, it's not really that, it doesn't take that long. Um, pretty much, yeah. I mean, I would say that the wa like sh washing them is the first 15 minutes plus, like, I'm I'm using that 15 minutes to to wash them and cut them wet, and then that's like with a normal guest. So that's a, a, an existing guest that has been in my book. I know what we're doing. Um, if it's a new guest, I'll probably take about an hour with them uh, to learn what they want with their hair and all of that. So still want to keep all of that uh, in consideration. Um, I'm not a big fan of bigger irons, so I only use that size, um, which which is a one inch. Um, there's a one and a half, uh, and a one and three quarters. I'm not I'm not a big fan of the bigger irons. I feel like they're harder to get into the tighter places on the head, um, and also the fatter iron. To me, as I take a section, I'm not going to be able to get that that bend around the head shape as well because I'm using just a thicker um, iron throughout it. So I don't, I've never been a big fan of the bigger iron. That may be the crease thing as well, now that I think about it. I'm just doing a little tease cutting. This is a half open, half close. Just adds a little air and separation to the technique. You can see this little bit longer pieces hanging over. Still really like those, but I want them to be nice and textured. And then this is the angle. Still have not fine-tuned that yet. So I'll work my way down. So a little tease cutting. So for the tease cut, pinch the hair, half close, push in. So I kind of half close it, then release. Half close, push in, and release. Teases up the hair a little bit, then once you comb it out, you get nice uh, uneven texture in there. 
which is really great, especially around this face frame. All this stuff was brought all the way back here and cut, so it just falls heavier. So if you want that to be nice and light, all you have to do is just go in, soften it a bit. But notice that I'm still bringing it back, not just doing it right in front of the face. I still want that kind of bringing this back over directing it back and tease cutting is still going to push it forward a bit, keep the haircut the way I wanted it. There wouldn't be that much of a difference, but it would be, so the question was, just in case you guys can't hear, what would the difference be if I just did the entire thing wet as opposed to doing the dry cutting in there? Um, biggest difference with that is if I were, so let's say I cut all this wet. Everything's going to be precision. I'm going to have some of the heavier lines. You could do that texture in there. Wouldn't be a big deal, but I'm still going to have to go in in the dry cut and create all that texture the deep point cutting, the things I can't get. When you have wet hair and I hold it in my hands like this and I go to cut it, all the hair, Dad, can you zoom out a little bit? All of the hair clumps up. And when the hair clumps up and I go in to do a point cut, then I get real jagged, bulky point cuts in there. When I cut dry, this hair separates. And because it separates, I can get my scissor in there and not cut a lot of hair at a time, but still get in there and do nice deep point cutting to take out some of the weight. So it's you're going to have to do both if you want this kind of you know textured result in the haircut anyways. So there's no point in wasting your time doing the full top and then going in and doing the bottom. You can though. And, and there's there's nothing wrong with it. It's just how much you know work you want to put in. I'm more of a salon reality uh, type haircutter, so if I can see a some sort of shortcut that's going to give me the same result then I'm going to go in and do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you have to go in there dry no matter what because this has a lot of texture in it. And yes, you would have to do the dry cutting in the final look. Yes, I, I said that. Um, so... Pretty much there. Oh, what's left on it? Okay. There's one uh, charging in the wall back there. Yeah. So the last little bit, I'm just going to take my comb run some deep point cutting in this way. So this is a little bit thicker comb, wide teeth. It's 209 comb from YS Park. So what I want to do is just add some of that texture throughout this graduation, cut into some of these pieces that we left a little bit longer. I think another big difference between, you know, doing this all dry and cutting it wet and really just leaving it that way is when you see people that have that really crazy stacked looking bob, that's what takes that away. Like if you go in, like we shattered the entire top of this haircut. And when you shatter a haircut, then you get this kind of uh, soft feel, even though it's layered. It's not stacked and, and uh, bulky and, you know, it doesn't look dated, I guess, is what we're going for there. Last technique. This one's kind of fun. I think you guys will get a lot of use out of this one. What do I do? There, there. By Saturday? Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I guess I shouldn't have said you got to rush it. Okay, so by Saturday, I'm going to pick the winner because I don't want you guys to feel too rushed or anything. So, and really don't stress about it. 
You probably have an iron anyways. Right. Saturday. Okay, so puffin. And what I'm going to do is just go through, comb all the hair forward, and I'm going to go in and just slide cut. And I love this because it takes a lot of that weight out, creates a lot of layers throughout here. So it makes the haircut really fun. Definitely brings in the modern kind of flair to it. Yep. It's just I got to iron it. There's a it's curled right now. I'll finish it and then she'll see. She's talking about this, but see how it's kind of curled up? And this is straight. I'm cutting into. There we go. See, it's that hole is the devil. Everyone, no one likes the hole. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. So slide cutting is fun because it creates texture, creates separation. Now let me iron this part here. All right. They're laughing. <laughs> the hole is the devil. All right. I'm liking it. Still a little bulky right here. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Is that Joyco uh, spray wax stuff over there? I thought I had it. I used Bricado. I'm going to use Bricado finishing spray. But I like spray wax. So we just got this guy, texture booster. It's coming to life. <laughs> yes. So I put, obviously this is extreme, but I know, I do too. But I get all the product in there, kind of brush it a little bit, and then I'm going to mess it up again. But I want to make sure I have product on every bit. <laughs> sure course we're shipping it so yeah we're sh we're shipping it and we love the Europeans we'll do it I know yeah that might be a challenge but I 
I think so, yeah. Okay, this is fun. Yeah, this Erica mannequin is on our site. So if you guys want one of those, you can pick it up. All right, I'm going to spin it. Bad, are you zoomed all the way in there? So here's some things I want you guys to realize why it, why it's cool to do the dry cutting and the wet cutting. This is, you can see all that dry cutting, all that texture, that all happened in the dry cut, but then it's sitting on top of this precision shape, which makes it really fun as well. So you get that hard line, the clean lines, but then the texture and movement sitting on top. So I think a lot of people would want to cut it precision or cut it just dry. I think both works really well because of the fact that you get this the precision lines, the texture, all that movement. Let's see if, uh, there we go. So texture, hard lines, lots of fun. Let's see if we can. There. Do you guys like it? They love it? Which one doesn't love it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Who is the one? Um, cool. So there it is. That's the end result. Can't wait to see uh, you guys try this in the salon for the next month. Um, it was so cool seeing the very first... Uh, see if we can... Can we get to that one? The one where I can talk to everyone. Um, my least favorite camera. Um, so thank you guys. I what I'm most excited about and what I liked about January was that we did the class and all through February got to see uh, a lot of what you guys were doing. So that was really fun to see you guys actually transferring the cut onto your guests, which is you know we work on mannequins, but mannequins are just the way to share technique. And then every guest is different. So it allows you guys to get out there and try it and adapt it. So with this, um, my big thing for you guys would be to get out there and try doing some precision cutting and then flip it to some dry texturizing. Uh, maybe the top, like this whole top portion of any of your guests is is what's going to lay over the structure. So the, the more you add freedom to that top portion, create that texture, I think you're going to really like it. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, if you guys have any questions, is there any other questions, Chris? Cool. So if you guys have any other questions, you know that you can always reach out to us on the FSE Partner Facebook page. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else. So thank you guys for being a part of today's class. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, tell all of your friends about the FSC Partner Program. I appreciate you guys supporting us. Um, we only have a couple classes left that will be in this room, and then we will have the studio. It's going to be really cool to, uh, to shift that as well. So can't wait for you guys to see everything that's coming in the future. Thank you for being a part of the FSC Partner Program, and we will see you guys on the next class. Thanks. <laughs> Damn. Uh. Yeah.